Hello, my name is Paul Burnett. I'm an accounting student at Southern Utah University, and I will be talking briefly about whistleblowing. Whistleblowing is an important key to creating a positive and ethical culture in a, in a company. Many people fear the idea of blowing the whistle, but I believe it's because they do not have an understanding of it, the effect it has on business, and that there are protections out there for whistleblowers. Through this discussion, I will briefly answer the following questions about whistleblowing. What is it? Why is there a need for it? When do we use it? And how is it to be done? First, the basic definition of whistleblowing is when a, a member of an organization witnesses or finds unethical or illegal behavior and reports it to the proper authorities. Illegal and unethical behavior can be something small or large. For example, it can be something as small as an employee lying on their reimbursement <coughs> expense report or as big as an $11 billion fraudulent financial statement. Proper authorities doesn't necessarily mean the police, but can be something as simple as a direct supervisor. With that basic, basic definition of whistleblowing, why is whistleblowing needed? Whistleblowing can safeguard the market. When people know that there are people out there watching and willing to report them, they tend to be a little cautious when coming up to these um, decisions that could be illegal or unethical. They're deterred from making them. Investors, creditors, and all stakeholders want to secure their position in the market and need to know that a company's financial statements, productions, and services are accurate, legal, and honest. Whistleblowers help make sure that this is achieved by reporting illegal and unethical behavior. <clears throat> Another important reason to blow the whistle is because it is the right thing to do, plain and simple. A person shouldn't stand by and let people get away with illegal or unethical behavior. It takes courage and persistence. Many companies desire to have a positive and ethical culture in the workplace. Many ingredients go into creating such, as cult such a culture, such as a mission statement and well-communicated policies and others. Many people would not consider whistleblowing as part of this uh, ingredients for the positive ethical culture. However, in his article, Whistleblowing, How to Build a Culture of, of Ethics, Chuck Gallagher argues, if your organization is committed to creating a culture of ethical behavior, whistleblowing is the key to ethical success. So when is, when is whistleblowing needed? First off, blowing the whistle should happen any time that one is a witness to illegal or unethical behavior. Although the most recent scandals of whistle and whistleblowing occurrences have happened in the accounting industry, whistleblowing can take place in any industry and can be needed. For example, when there is an illegal code violation in engineering, scamming of insurance agencies in the automobile industry, or deceiving the government and insurance agencies in the health industry. Another time to blow the whistle would be when someone has a gut feeling in a situation and whether they just feel something isn't right. This can obviously be a little bit more difficult of a situation because there isn't necessarily solid evidence, but <clears throat> only your intuition and gut instincts are there to support it. This will come with experience. Before blowing the whistle with, on just a gut feeling, one should ask him or, her, him or herself if there is a valid reason that they feel this way and that it shouldn't just be based off of a desire for revenge. This leads us to how to blow the whistle. Someone who blows the whistle needs to be courageous, persistent, honest, and objective. These are only a few of the traits that, of a whistleblower. It can be difficult because a whistleblower may face opposition and ridicule, and that is why courage and persistence are needed. Honesty and objectivity are there to ensure that the intent behind blowing the whistle is not just one for revenge, a desire to get a promotion, or for hatred for a coworker. There are many suggested steps for one to blow the whistle. <clears throat> Those steps can be found anywhere online or in your research or can be come up by your, come up on your own. In all of those steps that you find or come up with, a whistleblower should be sensitive and respectful to those involved in the process. In this manner, a working relationship, reputations, and more can be damaged as little as possible. Finally, it's important to understand that there are protections out there for whistleblowers. These protections are mandated by law and are there to help encourage them. Included in these protections is the need for only a low level of proof when blowing the whistle. There is no need for a whistleblower to prove that the complaint was accurate, only that there was a reasonable belief that the employer's conduct constituted an unlawful and improper activity. Whistleblowing is often misunderstood and spoken of with a negative connotation. However, after discussing the what, why, when, and how of whistleblowing, hopefully each of us is more prepared and feels comfortable blowing the whistle when there is a need for us to do so.